Hey guys, it's Kessie from Your Lover, and I'm here with... Andrew! And today, we're doing a long overdue video of a retro look back on the Nintendo GameCube, one of our childhood consoles back in 2001. If anyone hasn't known, I was born in 1993. It wasn't my first console ever, but it was the one I could grew up with as a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the systems I played before, my first was the Sega Master System, but that thing was like 10 years old when I was born <laughs> in 1993. Uh, no, wait, no, no, I, it was 8 years oldish. Uh, but my dad got it, and I just played the crap out of it, and got a Super Nintendo, and all that came out. But I could detect that the GameCube was like the first console I can actually be in the current era. Like, how do I say it? We both grew up in that same yeah. era. And, uh, and the GameCube is one of those interesting consoles that I think a lot of people look at um, as Nintendo trying to cater to a uh, new audience of gamers. Uh, it was their first digital disc format console, so literally they, that all their consoles before were just cartridges, so they went with a, uh, a, a, a sort of standard uh, format for games. Um, and the GameCube, uh, when it came out, it was kind of a weird uh, time for Nintendo. It was, the thing was, the N64 was just on its way out, and they wanted to compete with the new competitor, PlayStation 2. So what they did, uh, I believe ATI was uh, in, involved in, in the design of the Cube, and it was actually called Project Dolphin. That Dolphin? Was, yeah, Project Dolphin was its code name. Nice! Uh, and the thing was is that they wanted to make the GameCube uh, robust with uh, visual effects that has never been seen before. Uh, the PlayStation 2, when it came out, blew everyone's minds on how uh, a 3D game would look. I mean, you come from PlayStation N64 with playable graphics. These ones actually have, like, detailed faces, facial animations, and they have all of this hardware pushing graphics, like, with all the polygons on screen and everything. Uh, so the Cube came out, like, late 2001. Uh, it was released two days after the original Xbox. Uh, so, Nintendo uh, decided to make the Cube a little compact box, and I gotta say, it's a cool idea. I like the boxiness, it kind of describes what it is. It's a game cube, it plays games. Uh, and at the time, people were unsure what Nintendo was deciding to do with this thing, because, for one, the format they chose for the discs was a mini DVD. It was a mini DVD ROM. All the consoles used compact DVD R discs, or DVD ROMs is what they call it. Uh, and the problem with that was that uh, GameCube games only held 1.5 gigs storage on the disc. Well, a PlayStation 2 and Xbox game hold about 8 gigs. So, in that matter of respect, developers uh, at the time actually had no issues developing it for the disc size, because uh, games were still like under a gig big. Um, but if you have, like, say, like a game like Resident Evil or an RPG, uh, you'll have to separate it to 2 to 3 discs on what games were released. Uh, and then there was, of course, there's uh, audio compression, there's video compression. They have to sometimes take the features out of cute games to make it work. Uh, so, yeah, it was an interesting time uh, uh, to be a developer for Nintendo for the GameCube. Uh, but the plus part is, is that the cute games uh, were pretty inexpensive to produce. Uh, discs were much cheaper. Uh, the thing, too, was uh, they were compact. They actually loaded faster than any system that came out, even the original Xbox. Uh, the Xbox uh, used, again, it used a standard DVD hard drive. Uh, the Cube ran off of a constant angular velocity lens, which means that the discs keep spinning at the same rate. In some cases, let's say PS2 and Xbox, they had to actually uh, lower the speed of the drive just so it could load a specific information to the system's RAM to play. Well, this just goes up. So, I can see why they decided this format. And another thing, uh, it wasn't the first Nintendo system to use memory cards, but this was a standard. You have to have a memory card to play games on. Am I right, Tess? Oh, yeah. Like, uh, Animal Crossing and your amazing island, you definitely need to play, uh, have a memory and card. And Sims games, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're kind of 40 blocks. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And thankfully, though, memory cards are, uh, they're... They have pretty good storage capacity. You got the stock 70 uh, block ones uh, that came with games like Animal Crossing. I think the Sims. Uh, I don't think yeah, Sims. And there's several sizes. Yeah, and there's uh, a larger one that was 251, which is what this one is. And then there's a 1019, uh, which is a gray one that kind of looks like the 70 uh, memory card, but it's much bigger in storage mm -hmm. capacity. And it would say on the back one what it is. Um, but anyway. 
Uh, enough of a history about the Cube. Let's talk about our experiences. Tell them what was your experiences with the Nintendo GameCube. Okay, well, the first time I was introduced to the Nintendo GameCube was back when I was about six or seven. My cousins had gotten the GameCube. And the first game was, that I tried was WarioWare. Oh, WarioWare uh, Mega Party Games for the GameCube? Yes. I'm we're actually going to be covering that game today. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first one I ever played, and it was the first time I ever saw a wireless controller. Oh, you mean the Wayper controller? Well, it was a white, it was a white one. Yeah, Wayper. That's yeah. what it is. They had them, and my, my brother and my okay, my brothers and me and my cousins would fight over those controllers because they're, they're just so nice to have. They're wireless. They're not gonna get tangled up. You can just sit. Put her across the room and still be able to play the game. Too. I don't think there was ever been a wireless controller after the White Wave Bird till I think the Xbox did it with the 360. Unless yeah. you had a third-party developer that made it one. Uh, but that's cool though, you know. Nintendo was thinking ahead, and believe it or not, Castro, that Wave Bird controller. Which let's bring it out right now. Let's talk about the controllers. Uh, since she mentioned about that, <laughs> uh, the controllers themselves uh, have a pretty uh, distinct look. Would you say? Yeah, it looks it's, nice really different. I mean, you got you know, you got your traditional buttons off of like a PlayStation and an Xbox controller has diagonal buttons like this. It usually has a second stick or it has shoulder buttons. But the cube basically breaks that ground and puts random buttons on the front. <laughs> you got like a large A button, a small B button, X and Y buttons. I mean, this was weird. I mean, if you're used to traditional Nintendo controllers, they set a standard of having a try uh, like a like a, a diamond shape on the button layout. But no, this is the first one they actually went di different with the design. And I will say right now, this analog stick is the best thing I think Nintendo's ever made. No <laughs> analog stick would beat a GameCube one. I mean, playing Super Monkey Ball and stuff like on that is just amazing on this. What about the analog stick on N64? Uh, dude, those things were cheap. <laughs> <laughs> the thing was, no, no, not, not bashing the N64 for its innovation of analog oh, technology, no. but it was all plastic. The wheel, the wheel that helped the oh, stick and, and then gears, the, the, the plastic weird things. The controller, you know? Oh yeah, yeah. They went for a trident shape because they weren't too sure on how a 3D controller would look like. But now, you know, since it's the sixth gen, they yes. decided to go for a traditional horseshoe, kind of like the PlayStation 2. And the only downside I would say to the game controller, in my opinion, is the D-pad. The D-pad is not my favorite. <laughs> it's just, I wish they could have made it a little bit bigger. I know there was like a prototype controller that actually had a traditional Super Nintendo pad. Mm -hmm. But they wanted to make it compact and small, so I guess people could just reach down and use the D-pad uh, for whatever games you utilize it. It actually uses a C-stick, which is the camera buttons on the N64 controller. And another thing I'm just so mind-blown is that Nintendo never ever made a analog trigger uh, button for the shoulder buttons. This is the GameCube has that. You can push down and it actually detects how much you're pressing it. Uh, other systems just use digital buttons. It was all digital buttons, so this is like the only controller that has it. Uh, but yeah, though, um, anyway, enough of me about rambling. What's your opinions about the controller? Um, I liked it. It was convenient, especially when you play one of my favorite games of all time, game series, is Harvest Moon. And it came in handy when we played um, Harvest Moon, A Wonderful Life. A uh, Wonderful Life. Like, probably that'll be another game we'll cover today. Um, we'll get to the game soon, I promise, guys. We'll play some footage. Um, and then, let's talk about the Wayward, since you were mentioning about it. Here's what a Wayward would look like. Kind of looks similar, doesn't it? Well, well fatter, though. <laughs> it's a little fatter because it, it's holding a receiver. Mm -hmm. This thing uses radio waves. Yeah. It's radio technology. Uh, some controllers uh, that were early wireless were just using infrared. Kind of like a TV remote. Well, this one actually gets text where the model's plugged in, and it will go up to 40 feet away. Yeah, that's what I mean, that you can, <laughs> if you just have the game keep sitting there next to your TV, and you can sit on the couch, and you can get away, you can still play. <laughs> uh, the only downside, though, like, it's everything you love about a GameCube controller is a nice wireless function. Uh, the downside is, it does take AA batteries to run, but honestly, this one lasts about good 40 hours, so, I mean, it's not a deal breaker. If you have just a bunch of rechargeable batteries, I mean, this would be doing fine. Uh, and another thing is there's no rumble on this controller. They probably did it just due to the limitations of how much to use this controller. Well, it's weird, though, because my cousins, my cousins have the same thing, but they have no rumble. No, that's weird. Yeah, because no, this has no rumble on it. Uh, we took this apart, and there's no motors on this thing. Uh, there's no actual uh, vibrating function on it. Uh, but 
but yeah, anyway, that's the Subway Burger Controller. And oh, I forgot to mention too, uh, on the dongle you get for your cube, uh, you have a little uh, radio dial that detects uh, what signal, uh, what channel you have this thing on to, and you just use that to adjust whatever uh, signal the sensor is set to. So you guys don't have two GameCube on the wireless controllers, and have one control the other GameCube by accident. They did that for that reason. But anyway, let's talk about the games, since we talked about the system, the controllers, and now let's talk about the games. This is probably what I think makes the game too awesome, is that there are so many great games on this machine. It's, ugh, holy cow, yeah, a stack, a stack of it. Uh, not all of these are mine, one game, the game is actually my friend, so she's going to talk about it right now. Amazing Island. I don't know if any of you had a chance to play this, but... I love this game. It's really fun because you can actually create your own monsters. Um, Is it kind of like Pokemon? It's a little like Pokemon, but you're actually going through events and courses. You have to beat all the courses to get, like, items and certain abilities to do, like, designs on your dinosaurs. Or okay, so it's just basically a custom creator tool that you can make your uh, monster bigger, stronger, and better. Yeah, so, sometimes, like, one time, I actually made a... I don't know if any of you played Monster Rancher on the PlayStation. Oh, I'm familiar with that, yeah. Yeah, and they actually tried to create that one eye monster guy that, you know, has one foot, you know? Mm -hmm. I tried to create him. It turned out, meh, okay. But it was like, it was just on the legs, so it was like, he was bouncing up <laughs> and down. <laughs> it was like, what kind of creature did you create? I was like. supposed to be the monster, but I... Yeah. <laughs> and I also tried creating Digimon and stuff. And uh, so basically, yeah, you could replicate your own monsters. That's cool. Alright, so another GameCube game, I think both of us have child memories in this one, and that's Harvest Moon A Wonderful Life. And as she was telling about earlier, this is a fantastic game. I agree with her. I love the <laughs> ideal of raising your own farm, having your and own your family, family, and making a family. The only downside is that the GameCube version of this one only has you playing as the boy. I know another wonderful one alive has the the play girl. as a girl. That was weird. I don't know. I guess it might be just because of the storage capacity on the disc, not just put them all in there. But there's... But, yes, sir. But, uh... Anyway, but both those games, though, again, if you're looking for the boy version, it's just called A Wonderful Life. Girl version's called Another One. And Life. there's also one that's called... Uh, there's a special edition version, which is only for the PS2. Oh, so it has both genders yeah. on there. Okay. Yeah, well, it's but, special edition. <laughs> oh, only special edition version. Alright, but yeah, there's that one. And I think Magical Melody had that too, didn't it? Boy and girl. Yeah, you boy and girl. Yeah, yeah, boy and boy girl. Or girl. yeah, that's weird. I guess it might be just space limitations. And I kind of felt like Magical Melody kind of followed the the PS, the PS1 version. Yeah, going for a traditional uh, 2D art. No, not a 2D it art. A, it was a 2D art. It one. plays like a 2D art, this maybe. Mm -hmm. Which is not bad. I still think it's fun. And then, for me, this is just childhood for me. As you noticed from the GameCube she showed, I loved Sonic and, of course, how can I not talk about the awesome ports they did on the GameCube? You had Sonic Adventure DX, which is just your favorite Sonic the Hedgehog uh, game on the Dreamcast, Sonic Adventure, just had with added uh, graphics, and it has unlockable mini games and a mission mode. Really quite cool, and it's pretty cheap if anyone hasn't played the original. And Sonic Adventure 2 was my first ever GameCube I've ever played. I wish I would have played the Dreamcast one, but hey, I was blessed with the GameCube version, and it's the better version in a lot of people's cases. Uh, you have uh, the awesome ability of uh, racing Chows as well, and you can use a Game Boy Link cable with your copy of Sonic Advance, and you can actually use it as a Tamagotchi, just like in the Dreamcast via Mew. Yeah, no joke. It's cool. It's cool. And then uh, you also have, uh, of course, you have the gameplay styles where you have Sonic running fast in Shadow. Uh, you got the Trelldra hunting stages from the first game, and then uh, you got Tails and a couple other people in mechs, uh, which I never got. It's like, why is Tails in a mech? Isn't he supposed to be running fast and racing, like in the first game? Nope, they put him in a mech. <laughs> I don't know why. But yeah, excellent game, though. Uh, this one is, I don't know if you're familiar with this one, but I am, uh, is the sequel to 1080 on the N64, and that's 1080 Avalanche. It's the same arcadic fun gameplay that you have on the N64, just with better graphics, and it actually has a full soundtrack from Culturize, a rock band from that kind of day. It's freaking cool. Uh, very fun. Alright, and then another N64 sequel, Wave Race Blue Storm. Uh, I wouldn't say this one is as good as the first one, although, it, I mean, it has its perks, the better graphics, uh, the multiplayer mode's also really good, um, and it actually has a full list, uh, full 
bus trick system in it. Kind of like the original N64 one, which is more stuff to do. Although I would say, if you guys want a good wave racing game, I would say stick with the N64 one. The GameCube one's not bad, though. And then, oh yeah! Oh yeah! WarioWare Mega Party Games. Or they call it the GBA Ports of the Cube. Yes. <laughs> this was the first game I ever played on, on the GameCube. Yeah, and, and honestly, it's just a port of the GBA game, but just extra modes, a uh, four-player battle without having the link cables. Uh, you also just have, like, also you've got some additional stuff you can do on the Game Boy Advance if you can link to this. It's a really, really well done game. Uh, then again, if you guys have played on the GBA, I mean, you're not really missing too much, unless you really have a bunch of friends that want to play a full consoleized version of it with four players. You definitely get this game a try. And oh, another one, another childhood favorite of ours, Super Smash Brothers Melee. Woo. Hands down, best-selling game on the GameCube. Guess how much this copy of the game sold of uh, this game? Uh, no, seven million. Ow! <laughs> and the GameCube sales, uh, again, there was only 21 million that were sold worldwide. Uh, and seven million, this is the highest grossing game on the GameCube. Uh, and then again, this is also getting pretty expensive, too, which is surprising. You would think, you know, this being such a common game, it would still be like 30 40 bucks. I remember when GameStop had this going $15 at one time. But, anyway, but, again, the Smash Bros. Melee, if anyone hasn't said it before, one of the best Smash Bros. games, if not one of the best on the game. Would you say? Yes. It was another one of those first games that put in Yeah, man, it was awesome. And actually, I wasn't expecting much for it when I bought it, because uh, I got reimbursed. Uh, and what happened was, my original cube, that wasn't my original cube, I had a cube before it that got stolen. And uh, thankfully, um, my mom had insurance under our stuff, and they reimbursed me with a new cube. And I was able to pick a couple of games, new games, so this was one of them. And I made a good choice. It was good. Alright, the next game I'm going to be talking about is a game that I'm not familiar with, but she is. She grew up with this one, and that's Kirby's Air Ride. Yes. I played Kirby's Air Ride when I was a kid. I loved it because you got this free, like, there's mo there's this mode in the game where you can just ride these vehicles all around. And level up the level it up by getting the defenses, the attacks, the special attacks. Mm -hmm. And you can even screw up your other players by taking their abilities away. <laughs> And you could also just like hit them with different what power ups. Power like you get like a spiky, or you get flying yeah, it's like, hey! <laughs> it's, yeah, what we played that one time with a bunch of my friends. Anthony got screwed so bad in it. <laughs> we kept leveling them down. Yeah, <laughs> and it's in the mini game. Story about this. Okay, <laughs> the fun story about this. Um, I haven't played Kirby and Ray since I was like nine years old or something like that. And Andrew, along with my brother. I decided to buy this. Well, I bought it myself. Well, yeah. And, um, okay, so, and then I had to, like, let's go back to, um, let's, how about we go back to my apartment and play Spirit Smash Brothers? Yeah. Like, okay. And they handed me, just me, the controller. I'm like, why am I the only one that has this controller? And then this comes up, I'm like, I started fangirling. I wish I would have had that on camera, too. Because the game looked like, no joke, like, it was made by the same developers, Hal Laboratories made this, and Smash Brothers was also made by Hal, so it was the same team. Uh, so the beginning kind of looks like Smash Brothers, right? Yeah, You're like, wait a minute. He's like, why is he wearing a rock star? He's like, this is Curry's Airway! Oh my god! I can't believe you guys got this! <laughs> oh man, it was a reaction worth what we see. I know. We did get a picture of it, though. Yeah, and she had a picture of me. I was just like, like looking like I'm, <laughs> looking like I'm high, actually. Anyway, uh, another GameCube game. This one's actually another one I didn't grow up with, but I think it's just so bizarre that I think it work deserves a mention. And that's uh, DDR Mario Mix. And this is actually the only DDR game that was released on the GameCube. Just due to the storage capacity the discs had, I was surprised they were actually able to cram a Mario Brothers themed DDR. And Konami was also behind this, too, which is quite funny. Because, uh, you know, you think DDR, you think PlayStation. And then, of course, Xbox got it later, and then, of course, Mario said, Well, let's go play some DDR, and just came up with this. Um, and the DDR mats themselves, they're pretty much like uh, the Wii ones that you have, but, of course, it just has a Mario decal on it, and it has GameCube on the bottom. I have two of them, but uh, I don't want to dig them up, because they're pretty big. But anyway, there's its game, DDR. 
DDR, Mario Mix? I am not very good at DDR. <laughs> it's an easy DDR game. It's like probably one of the easiest ones. I'm not very good, though. Those things are... And speaking of weird games, uh, this one, I think, is weird to a creative level. I don't know if you grew up with this, but the DK Conga slash DK Jungle Beat series. Have you played any of these? Uh, the Conga series is like your standard, like, Atari Hero Affair, but you're playing music on the bongos. Uh, which, here's the special controller it came with. Uh, it's this. This is the DK Bongos, uh, which is two pressure-sensitive <laughs> buttons and a start button on the front. And it actually has a microphone on there, so it can record your claps. If you make noise, it actually detects it, and it makes an action happen on the screen. So you can do, like, do claps along with eating the bongos. Which is very creative. I'm very, very happy they came up with uh, Donkey Konga, again, it's just like your DDR, Guitar Hero Affair. And then this one was the most interesting to me, because they actually made a 2D platformer with bongos. Makes no sense. And, and in most people's eyes, you're like, how the heck are you going to use an instrument as a controller for a platforming game? Oh, why did they do it? You just move the controller, uh, you just move the character on the screen, like, just tap in the bongos, left or right. You press both of them together, like, you uh, do that to make them jump. You clap to make them attack. And that's it. That's all it is. You just jump, clap, attack, go left and right. It's a very addicting game, and I think everyone should get this game a try. I know they released it on the Wii, but I heard it wasn't as good, just because it's all motion-based. Mm -hmm. um, again, nothing could beat the GameCube originals, but yeah, here you go. And then the sequel, I don't have the sequel yet. I know there was a Donkey Kong at 3, but that was only released in Japan. Again, I wish we had it here. That would be pretty fun to play. Um, and then, let's talk about uh, Naruto. Are you a big fan of Naruto? Sort of. I started watching the series, and, well, I'm getting into it. <laughs> well, I know your brother's a huge fan of Naruto. Mm -hmm. uh, and luckily enough, the GameCube actually had two unique more Naruto games, and that was the Clash of Ninja. Uh, you got the Very first game. game and the second one. Personally, I played the first game. I thought it was pretty solid for the time. Um, again, you know, the, the character the character set was pretty good. I liked the whole simple uh, pressing the button to tag, having a projectile tag, have one dedicated for grabbing, and you do a special move. Uh, and you can do, like, evades and do uh, chakra chakra attacks where you can like, do, like, an, a, a warp behind the screen to knock the player back or do it from above. Uh, but, yeah, pretty simple mechanics, but pretty fun. Uh, and again, the game is pretty short, this version is, but they definitely updated the sequel, though. Uh, this one, again, is probably the far superior game. It has 23 characters in it compared to the only, I think there was only like a couple, maybe 17 characters in this game. Maybe less, I don't know. I haven't played it in a while, but I'm more familiar with this one. Uh, it has a four-player battle mode, kind of like uh, Tekken meets, uh, uh, how can I say, like a gladiator set of battle game, kind of like Power Stone. But uh, you could actually uh, uh, meet, uh, link up your attacks to a select character by pressing the Z button, and you can change your focus on another player. It's very addicting, and it's probably one of the best Naruto games I would play. I haven't played the ones on PS2, so I'm not too familiar with those. How about you? Did you play, like, Naruto, uh, what I've is only it? only played the game with you. Ultimate Ninja? Yeah, but anyway, Naruto games were awesome on the queue. And then the last game I just want to mention, uh, I don't have a whole lot of GameCube games. Like, you didn't ha uh, bring Pikmin, did you? Mm -hmm. Pikmin was another good one. If Hannah wanted to have not played it, it's a yeah, Nintendo you guys, staple. You guys that follow my channel, follow this channel, you've probably seen, like, episodes one through three of me playing. Yeah, so you go check it out. Uh, it's a very fun RPG, uh, not an RPG, but a real-time strategy game where you control a bunch of little creatures called Pikmin that kind of just like little tiny little seeds with legs and arms <laughs> and has different abilities. And then the last game I want to bring up, uh, just to end it off, I know there's like a whole bunch of game games, but if I went for every single one, this game is going to go on forever. <laughs> yeah. But let's talk about Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Uh, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, again, is my favorite RPG for Mario. Um, I haven't played, uh, I haven't played the new Snicker Star one on 3DS, but I heard a lot of people weren't really a fan of the changes. And I played Super Paper Mario, but it doesn't play like an RPG. It plays more like a traditional 2D Mario game with just added abilities and such, so. And I get it, they want to make it different from Mario and Luigi, but it's just, it's not a game. Uh, I, I'd rather prefer just the old score 3D, wouldn't you? But anyway, again, another great one hasn't played it. <laughs> Give this game a try. But anyway, speaking of games, why don't we play some games? Alright. Let's do it, guys. Hit it.
Alright, so the first game we're going to be playing is a WarioWare uh, Mega Party Games for the Nintendo GameCube. Uh, this game was released in, I think, 2004. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I wasn't too familiar with this one growing up, but hey, that would be a first first game for us. Oh, it's just telling us not to worry about saving the game. Or giving us a warning to die. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Why does it have a weird disformed hand? It's like black and white hand. <laughs> doing the single player mode because all the other modes evolve the same micro games. It's just, uh, it has like different principles on the multiplayer play. Well, this is just your typical waterware affair. Alright, so what are we going to be using? Your name? Mm -hmm. Alright, so we'll just use the, we'll just use K, E, I want to call yourself Kez. Kez? Kez, with Kez. a Z. That, that works. Go to N, go to N. <laughs> And then, and then, and then, oh. Oh, oh, no, that's no, no. <laughs> There. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Choose a gender? Yep. Alright, so, we're gonna go to the games. Album's just unlockable stuff. Alright, let's do the first stage. Alright, let's see how it's going. We'll pass it around if uh, one of us loses. Gotta catch all the. Oh, oh you only have to catch the shirt! Oh! You have to oh, catch the shirt. Okay. okay, what's the next one? Press A to catch. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. It's probably been a while. All right, go for the jewel. There you go. There you go. Well played. Well played. Let's see. Stop the Goomba. You missed. <laughs> Spotlight Wario. Oh, you gotta go get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since you played this, man. I bet. Huh? Alright, GBA comes alive. Let's do this. Okay, I gotta flee. Gotta flee, gotta flee, gotta flee, gotta flee. Ah! Woo! That was close. That's a simple one. Yeah, that was close. Jump over the wiener. Oh, I did it. I did it. What's the next one? Give me a tip, Barlard. Yeah! Thank you. That's refreshing. Okay. Oh, I gotta dress the Wario. That's how you're supposed to do it. Attack the alien ship. It's mine. There we go. Come on. I hope I don't screw up. Ooh, caught the stick. Right in the middle. Right in the middle. <laughs> oh, and then it gets faster every time you're doing very well. Stop the Wario. Ooh, that was close. That was really close. Okay, come on. Give me a one. Oh, gotta collect the coins. What? No! What? <laughs> Oh, okay. Here's some there. Push it down. Oh, okay. <laughs> Gotta stop the Goomba. There. I was gonna say. I hope I didn't miss that. <laughs> Good grief. All right. Go for the gem. Yes. That one was easy. See, this is how you're supposed to spotlight him. He gave up. Because he wouldn't escape this one. <laughs> I'm on the last stage, boss stage. Let's do this. Oh, we got a spare against a no, a spar against a bar. Okay, let's do this. Punch. Ah! What? <laughs> oh, I got another chance. Let's do this. Come on. That, that was a fail. What was that? Okay, I'm gonna punch him more. Oh, I get it now. It's a rhythm. Okay. Let's finish it! Yeah! Got it! Woo! <laughs> now it's your turn. Whoa, I'm beat. Why does he have a weird deform hand crawling on the back of the sofa? That, that doesn't look normal. Oh, we're gonna go to the sports channel now. Swing the baseball. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that was simple. Press A. I am pushing it. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> okay. Oh, jump him. You got it. Hey, you got this. You're doing great. Oh, up down, up down, up down, up down. Yeah! Show your muscles. 
muscle. <laughs> Defend the ball! Ah! No! Ah! Come on, we have two lives left. Okay. Land it! Land it. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! Alright. Gotta toss. No! Oh, what? <laughs> Jump it. Tony Hawk right there. <laughs> That's right up. Bruce Lee that log. Oh. I forgot you're supposed to move him that way. Jump! That guy's going to the Olympics. I learned this in elementary school. That's how you're supposed to jump. Pro. Well, oh, still got it, even though I got a foul ball. Oh, it's getting faster again. Oh dear. I love it how they make it like so serious, like like a Rocky movie in uh -huh. that mini game. Just barely made it. Oh. Please don't die. Please don't die. I only got one life. Oh! 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 Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Yeah! Land it. I'm putting this over on me. No. Okay. That shouldn't happen. <laughs> I beat it this game and now I suck! Why? It's been a long time. Uh, uh, probably. Uh, well, let's see if you can beat if, if, if you lose, we're going to the next game. Ah! <laughs> hey, I was not the only one that screwed up. I got That's it. the ball! Go to the right. Follow the monkey. He's gonna help you. 
<laughs> oh my lord! Looks like a deformed tiger that turned into a mosquito. It looks like a dog to me. Look at that. It's still a beak. Oh, jeez. No, it looks more like a honey mirror bird. Oh, you get the you get the benefit of getting potions. I got nothing. Oh really? Okay, that's nice. So it's not like oh you you didn't play the game long. Oh okay, no, no, no. <laughs> Rumble on for me because I have a rumbling controller. 
Here we go. Finally play a multiplayer game. Whoa! What is he doing? <laughs> He's walking on the clouds! I thought he didn't fly. Okay, here we go. Let's see this. Jungle Dash. Okay, try to nipple mash. Yes, we already know how to play this game. I'm ready. I'm ready. Ready? Meters? You gotta be kidding me. That guy's good, whoever did that. Created one of the developers, maybe? <laughs> Probably. Or they just said, oh, we're just gonna put a code in. Make sure that they try to beat it. Alright, is this that meter game? It was. Okay, it's the Bali game. Spin break, yep. This is the okay. same game. No, 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 this is different. This is different? Yeah, watch. Oh, it's Battle Tops! Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. You gotta be joking. Beyblade meets monsters. I'm aware of this. It's Beyblade all over again, man. Whoa! Giving you a beat down. 
like a deformed elephant. I see it froze it off. Now you gotta defeat the boss. Holy 
cow. This is so weird. Screwed you up. Dead. Right on time, too. A minute 21 to spare. Nine wow. minutes left. Right? You mean nine seconds left? Nine minutes. Minutes? All right! Ready to go! All right. Go. Let's see if my monster can do it. Come on, man. I have faith in you. Oh, whoops. There we go. That's awkward. So I just switches right on the fly. Okay. Yeah, 
this. Oh, jeez! No! You and your rock! Oh! Oh, no! Oh! Oh, jeez! I remember the chaos in this was. You remember the time I played Mount? Countless amount of matches have said that. It's so fun. Oh, jeez! Samus! No, shit!
Ah, uh, great. <laughs> Samus is out! Man, Kirby, you got six lives! Ooh! Oh, that could have been dead end for me. Oh, Ink in your face! Oh, he's out! It's up to me and you now. My Yoshi's ready. He's staying up. Let's do this. Oh. Nope! Oh! <laughs> That's right. Boot to the face. You're out of here. Do I just All right. Gosh! Gotcha. Ooh! No. Oh, you're really going to do this? Oh! Ooh! Sorry, I can't 
can't get over the voices. That's so funny. Oh, God. No. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's right. Get out of my face, Red. Charging up!
or the enemies around you. That's right, I caught you on fire! Alright, let's go. And you can grab with the left and right shoulder buttons. That's right! That's right, got the microphone. I'm in the lead. Where are you, Cass? Gosh dang. Got the sword. Bye. Bye. Oh, I charged too much. Dang it. Alright, now I'm on the final. Oh, this is a two lap race? Oh, man. Oh, no, you're not. Get over here. I'm coming after you, Kes. I got a sword. Hey, ow. I can't remember. Does your like ship have health in the races, or is that only in CD trial? It's only in CD trial. Oh, okay. Oh, what? Oh, you gotta be joking. You can't even just swap and fuck it. Jeez. Okay. Let's play another match of this, and then we'll do the top row. Well, let's look at this. We got an achievement? Yeah, achievements are always good. So... For our next course, why don't we do Beanstar Hulk. Heart. Or whatever. Warpstar. I don't know, I'm always just good with Warpstar. It's all around type. But I know there's some players out there that could be really good with a lot of the other things. I'm just, I'm just typical. I like the Warpstar. Um, I think this is the last game that uh, Masahiro Sakurai worked on that was Kirby related. Then he kind of moved on. The creator of Kirby. The guy that actually made the character. He made also Smash Brothers too, so, you know. And in City Trial, you can collect oh, man. abilities to make your vehicles fly! <laughs> yep, yeah, but not in this one. You're stuck with the vehicle you chose. I got spikes! Ugh, get over here. Uh, come on, Kirby! Catch up! Man. Oh, that was a musical note I could have gotten, and I would have really put you on. Ah, oh, crap. No! Oh, get over here. <laughs> Woo! We're looping! Final lap. Ah, oh, I landed wrong. Dang it. Sweet, got bird, Kirby. Now I'm coming after you. Nope. So long, sucker. Aw, oh, dang it! <laughs> How did I hit the wall? Come on, Kirby! You're better than that! Oh. There we go. Boost it. And I think, don't you have to hold down the A button when you're over the arrows and you get a juke boost? I think so. It's been a while since I played this. Oh, man. Oh! Whoa, where am I? Oh, I took the shortcut. Sweet. Shortcut? Yeah. You fly up to the little anchor that's up there. You get into the top of the level and you go down. Instead of going climbing up. Oh, I fell. Dang it. Okay, come on. Oh, you're just right behind me, too. Oh, jeez. Where, where's the sword? Give me my sword. Oh, third thing. Okay, I'll take this. No! Where is my sword? Oh, yeah! Woo! Thank you, Bird, for helping me earlier. I would have never gotten this race. Yes! Yes. Okay. All right. Way to end that one off. Beanstalk Park. Why do they call it Beanstalk Park? I don't know. All right, let's do the top right one. We already know how to play. All right, join in. Oh, sweet, I'm yellow again. Or you know what? Oh, okay, you're gonna be blue. All right, press start. And this is the top right thing. It's like a rally game if you played on the 16-bit or 8-bit eras. Oh, wait, I'm going the opposite way! <laughs> oh, I got distracted. That was bad. Okay. I gotta focus. 
Here we go. So here's the city trial course. Let's go. I love the music. Got my defense up. Oh uh, wait, really? Yeah. If you get if you get lighter weight, it makes it hard for you to maneuver your uh, vehicle for whatever mini games being chosen. Oh, my weight went up. Nice. Destroy your vehicle if you're not careful, too. Ooh, got a new charge. Sweet. My defense went up. And I forgot you could break blocks, too. But they also take up your vehicle. No, wait, they don't affect the vehicle. Okay, that's nice. Uh oh, boss characters in the city. And if you destroy the city boss uh, in the make of time, you can get extra bonuses for your vehicle. What's going on with my character? Well, oh, dude, you got the jump star! Or whatever that is. Where's the bird? So we're by the, uh, the volcano. Ah. Oh, I gotta climb up there. Whoa, I destroyed my vehicle. Crap, now I gotta go find another one. I should have went up there and attacked his head. That, that would have been his weak point. Aw, oh, crap. Where's the vehicle? Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, I'm not the greatest at this game, if anyone couldn't tell. Well, I could probably just get myself a better vehicle all around anyways. Yes. 
Ah, oh, sweet. Wow, the acceleration on this thing is slow. I'm invincible, baby! Aw, oh, man. Oh, I got the spin power up. Now I can knock anybody that's nearby. Boom! Boom! Man, I can just imagine this. It's sick, dude. Whoa! Supercharge! Ah! Wow! <laughs> Holy cow! I can't control this thing! Dude, I'm on like an inside the middle. Oh, oh my lord. I remember how freaking insane that is. Oh, oh that would have hips up in my turning. Oh, come on, dude. That was not cool. Oh. Charge! There you go. Man, this thing just slow. Come on. Why is my vehicle so dang slow? Oh, wait. Oh. Man, I probably made a wrong choice for a vehicle, but I guess this works better than nothing, I guess. We got another boss. There we go. Night of the bomb. There we go. I let... Now, this is better. I actually got the charge better on this machine. Let's see if I can level up. Oh, food. Oh, a rice ball. Thank you. Does that just give you more health? From what I remember? Uh, actually. I think it is something that you had health to your. Man. Oh, yeah. oh, my charge went down. Oh, I'm asleep! Dang it. When you're asleep, you're pretty much left idle for a long time. Yeah. Until you wake up. Can't do nothing about it. Oh, I should have got the wheelie. The wheelie guy could have at least been happy. Oh, yeah, man. I got lightning. Too bad there's no one near me. I ought to electrocute with someone. Oh, my God. Ah, oh, dude, I need more turning. Where's my turning? Get over there. Spending power up. That's not really useful right now. Up to one, zero. Now time for the mini game. Oh dear. I hope, I hope I have a good power-up. I really hope so. Well, I got better defense. My turning's okay. Let's hope we don't get in that one. Dude, you got your weight as light. You got a lighter. Oh, it's the high jump. Yes, oh, no. One. I can't do this one. I can't do this one. I can't do this one. Dude, my vehicle's so slow. Ah. again for tuning in. Uh, yeah. It's going to be, I hope it isn't too long. Um, uh, but yeah, um, hope you guys enjoyed some of the features uh, that we have gone over. Uh, any last words? Subscribe. <laughs> Alright, take care guys. See you guys later.